What's up, Summoners? King Blair here. Today for Top 5 Tuesday, we're going to be talking about the top 5 heroes that people tend to sleep on. They're actually very good characters, but not as many people are using them right now. So, if you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and just go server. Link in the description. If you think I missed a character on this list or disagree with one of them, let me know down in the comments. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, you know that I kind of slept on? These are heroes that are actually really good, and if you do have them, they can actually do very, very well in the right situations, right? And and people may not know that these heroes are as useful or exactly how to use them. So hopefully this video helps you like kind of think of those heroes. But not first, with honorable mentions, first we have none other than Mort. The main reason I'm including him here is because a lot of people still think that he's unusable and that he's hot garbage. He's actually not that bad, right? He was a meme for a very long time, but with all the buffs and the EE that they gave him, he's actually decent. I do see him a lot in a, in a Guild Wars defense. If you're in a lower guild that's not top 100 guild, or even if you're like in low top 100 guild, Guilds, you may want to consider a more defense. He's actually not too bad. I've actually seen a couple of, of guilds use a uh, C. Lilius Mortelix uh, defense, and it does decent, right? Because he's pretty bulky. He has really good dual attack with the C. Lilius, and he also does a lot of work at stopping people from tanking you, right? So it's not a bad option for Guild Wars defense. And for RTA, he's actually not a terrible hero. He's not like super incredibly busted that you have to build him. Uh, but I mean, you may want to take another look at him. He's not as bad as people actually think he is and does have a pretty decent PvE with being able to hit that decreased defense. I know I use him quite a bit for inheritance because of how reliable that decreased defense actually was. Next up is going to be none other than Solitaria. A lot of people think this unit is bad uh, and, and still that thing is she's still bad, right? She recently did get a buff. One of the reasons you're not seeing her as much is because there's not many people that actually have her and the people that do, very few actually know how to use her at her full potential, right? She's kind of a unit to wrap your head around. The big thing that she's able to do is lock down a unit turn one, right? She's actually really good into things like Hua, who's everywhere right now because you're able to potentially stun them, push them back, and you're able to get that stealth so you don't get killed right after. And in the follow-up turns, you're able to strip, you're able to potentially stun again, and you're able to control the pace of the game. Actually a very, very solid control unit. Um, again, people are still getting used to her. She did just get buffed, but she's still a very, very good option. And of course, Tikra set, a main reason why he's actually on here is because he's actually still a very, very strong knight that I feel a lot of people forget is there. He's actually an incredibly good anti-cleave option because he does have the largest damage share effect in the game with a whopping, I believe, 40% uh, of damage sharing, right? So you're able to share up to 40% of the damage, making your backline hero incredibly bulky. And with a lot of heroes actually being able to have their own Adam and Shield, think like Qua, right? Or even Rimuru with Proof of Valor, right? If you pair them with Tikra Set, that unit essentially becomes unkillable, right? And it makes it really hard for a cleave to actually be able to kill that unit. Really good in RTA, really solid in Guild Wars in certain situations where you wanna make sure a unit is surviving. Overall, not a bad option. Pretty solid hero, but again, honorable mention because I feel like the other units on this list have a lot more impact in the game. But that is going to bring us to the number five, and we have none other than Ida. Ida is incredibly powerful. She's good for Guild Wars, she's good for RTA, she's good for Arena, right? She's good in all aspects of PvP, and I don't see a lot of people actually talking too much about her, even though she's one of the easiest to set up units for aggressive team compositions, right? She pairs really well with Sinful Angelica, with Conqueror Lilius, with a lot of other cleave units, right? In Guild Wars, you're able to take her with your own C Lilius and just kind of stomp a team. In Guild Wars defense, a lot of people actually use Ida because they will bring in their Conqueror Lilius and the Ida will be able to follow up and stun, right? And it often ends up working quite well, right? So she's actually a really, really solid unit, really incredible for Arena. A lot of people that climb Arena probably use Ida because she's so easy to set up into. You just do it at Sinful Angelica S3, you cleanse all this, um, that the buffs that Acelia may have put on you, and you're coming in with Anita with an attack buff that can soul burn. She brings her own book, push the enemy back, push herself forward, strip the opponent, and potentially even stun, right? It just does so much. And on top of that, she has a very high damage threshold, making her be a really solid DPS option and just really good for all these different situations. At number four, we have none other than Sinful Angelica. This is another hero that recently got buffed, and a lot of people may not know she's actually being used a lot in particularly Guild Wars offense, right? Because as we mentioned, Sea Lilius is pretty much everywhere in Arena and in Guild Wars, right? You see them pretty much all the time. And Sinful Angelica, what she gets going for her is that she's very easy to get imprints for, which is going to mean that she's going to have quite high effect resistance because with her base effect resistance and her imprints, she's already all the way up to 58%, right? You pair her off with something like a Doctor's Back Artifact, and with this S3, you're able to cleanse two debuffs 
and give your team a tactical open speed buff and be able to follow up with something like Anita, right? She's extremely common in Guild Wars because again, she just resists the Conqueror Lilius. She cleanses the attack rate. You don't even need Doctors back for her in Guild Wars. You can just give her uh, the artifact that gives her high FRS, the Guild Wars artifact. And now when you resist the Conqueror Lilius, you cleanse attack break, you give your team attack buff and speed buff. If you have Anita, you push that Ida up and then you just cleave the Guild Wars defense or the, the arena defense, right? Because you have this very strong unit that's cleansing and giving really good attack buffs. And on top of that, she has follow up with guaranteed dual attack with your highest attack ally which is incredibly, incredibly helpful. So the fact that she's so able, so easily able to tank the debuffs from Conqueror Lilia since she is dark, it makes it really easy to set up into the rest of your team and be able to just cleave with it. Very, very good dark tank in Guild Wars offense. Very, very good unit again in Arena, right? Because she just sets up so easily. And on top of that, she can also stop revives. Some people still run some revive comps, right? So even things like Mercedes and Guild Wars are pretty common. You're able to just come in and kind of mitigate that. But now that is going to bring us to the number three hero. This is a hero that I put on here because not as many people may know that he's this strong. And that's going to be none other than Watcher Shuri. And there is two reasons why this guy is used so much, particularly in Arena and in Guild Wars. You won't really see him in RTA though. But the big thing that he's doing is going to be the speed imprint that everyone gets, as well as being easily able to one-shot a unit. Again, as we mentioned, with things with the meta being so fast, right? he has become incredibly more valuable because all these Hua defenses rely on the Hua actually taking their turn, right? So it's becoming more common to aggro the opponent and it's a lot easier to set up into your aggro with a nice little 10 speed imprint for the rest of your team. You're very easily able to come in with your Sinful Angelica, do your S3, set up that attack buff, set up that Watcher Shuri and one shot something out the gate and you still have the other unit in Guild Wars to deal with the other unit, and then you just kind of win, right? You just double one shot and you're chilling, right? All these see little differences, easy mode, right? Free load. So it's a really good combination option. And in Arena, the best way to climb in Arena is actually going to be to cleave. And even if you don't have the greatest speed gear on the planet, the fact that you're able to slap on this speed imprint on your team for Arena and just be able to push through and cleave through without having the best speed gear it's just incredibly nice again because of how nice this little nice to, uh, speed imprint is and a lot of people that climb a lot and are cleaving their way through arena will use him and another speed imprint as well as a setup unit and Ida to be able to climb a lot easier it's just it just works extremely extremely well for your team but that is going to bring us to the number two and we have none other than Sid I feel like no one talks about this hero even though he's incredibly powerful like he's so good in so much content guild wars rta arena this guy is so underrated honestly he could even be number one in this list but this unit is just incredibly underrated because he does so much damage and as we mentioned all the good things that watch Shuri had he has as well he has that aoe speed imprint of 10 speed imprint he is a single target nuker he does so much damage on this S3. It is ridiculous. And when an enemy is defeated, he gets an extra turn and you're able to go in with the double tap. A lot of people set up their SIDs with Wind Rider. He comes in, he one shots something and he follows up and one shots something else with Wind Rider, right? Because you're just getting that massive 60% attack increase. This guy does incredible amounts of damage because a lot of the stuff that he has is also based on... on on his speed, right? So because he also has damage based on speed, he does a really good attack amount of attack. If he gets increased speed, he does a lot more. And the other thing is that he attacks with advantageous element when he has increased speed. Again, another hero that pairs off really well with Sinful Angelica because you're giving him another speed buff. You're letting him just attack with advantageous element. You can hit a fire unit, pop him, come in, S1, pop something else, right? This hero is so underrated. Someone in the Discord that made very high emperor use this cleave all the way up to high emperor with sid because it was so good to have the speed imprint in the current meta with everything being so fast that you're able to outspeed the opponent and beat those squishy aggressive teams and he brings in enough damage to the table to actually make that happen but that is going to bring us to the number one hero in this list that i feel like a lot of people he's starting to get a lot more popularity and is going to be none other than coward this hero has slowly crept up to be one of the strongest meta units in the game near the end of the rta season he was starting to become a menace and even now he's a very very good option in guild wars and rta because of how much damage and how valuable 
his S2 can really be, right? This guy does an incredible amount of damage. His EE also gives him crit hit chance, which allows you to build him pretty high, pretty strong. But the big thing is going to be the fact that he's a mage that can bring his own book and you're guaranteed to reset a target, right? You're stripping them with this soul burn and you're resetting their cooldowns twice, right? So you're reducing the cooldown twice. There are so many units in this game that rely on having their cooldowns. Hua, without her 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 cooldowns, is not doing a lot, right? Remu without his S3 is not doing a lot, right? Mediator Cowork without his S3 is not doing a lot, right? You come in and you basically make a unit useless for two turns, right? As long as you can outspeed, right? And that's a big if, which means that, yes, C. Lilius can outspeed. But if you pair him with C. Lilius, his damage is also through the roof. And he's able to get stealth in and increase speed with this skill and gets attack buff before using this skill. I believe from the EE, he gets that attack buff. And you're able to come in and just explode the opponent if they don't have the AoE to actually deal with them. So he's a unit that a lot of people are kind of sleeping, but I will warn that he's incredibly hard to actually build. You do need to put a lot of good gear on him to actually be able to make him work well, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people aren't using him. He needs to have like really strong damage, basically 100% crit and really solid speed, at least 260 plus to outspeed the Rimuru's and the Emo Cowrix and all that stuff. So you can reset them. He does lose into Cleave. He does lose into Para. So that's something you do have to realize. Para is still really, really strong in this meta. Um, and Cleave just very hard to deal with. But in a lot of situations, you can work around that. And his damage is incredibly, incredibly high. But that is going to be for this top five of units that people are sleeping on. And why they're actually a lot better than people think. I am not. Well, I don't want you guys to feel like these are like the best heroes on the planet. But they are quite good heroes at what they do. But that's all I got for you guys today. And I will see you next time. Peace.